Sono nel nord dell'Italia. I am in northern Italy, between Trieste and Venice, exactly in San Giorgio di Nagaro, a place that boating enthusiasts definitely know, because here there is one of the bases of Cranky, with sheds where the boats are being equipped, the docks are located, and there is a test center, Italo Monzino, which is open 365 days a year. Siamo in pieno inverno. It is the middle of winter and it's quite cold, but we're going to try out an open boat. Maybe the day is not picture perfect, or actually, maybe it is, because we won't be distracted by climatic conditions and we can focus on the technical aspects of this boat, the Cranky 60 ST. We start the engines. There are two Volvo Penta D11, nearly 11,000 cubic centimeters each, which seems like it should make a lot of noise, but when we close the engine room... It's a merit to the soundproofing accomplished by Cranky. The seat electronic adjustment is not essential, but it's very comfortable. When using the Volvo Penta engines, it is logical to have IBS propulsion and a joystick. The boat is 18.52 meters long and 4.85 meters wide, and yet you can maneuver better than on a boat of 5 meters. When designing a boat, you have to think about many things. First of all, the hull, which must be done in order to better face the waves. Then the balance of the hull. Not to spoil the working of designers, engineers and testers. Be careful when loading the equipment and items you bring with you on a cruise. Load carefully, distribute them evenly throughout the hull. All this because when we give gas, bring the boat into planing and then sail, we want to make sure it has the correct trim. Now, for example, we are in the most critical phase of navigation, the entrance into planing. I lowered a bit the interceptors and the angle of incidence is correct. This cranky 60ST is planing already at 11.5 knots, but what is surprising is its acceleration. I don't believe it. We are already at 20 knots. 25, 27, 28, 30 knots. Who knows where we'll arrive? But let's go step by step. Indubbiamente non è sportiva solo nel look, anche nelle sue prestazioni. Cominciamo a prendere qualche dato di navigazione. The boat is undoubtedly not only sporty in looks, but also in performance. We begin to take some data navigation. For example, let's see what happens when we sail at 25 knots. The interceptors act as trim tabs, but they are far more effective. These, in particular, the Humphrey, have a very broad blade, and to control them, you just touch a button, and then wait a moment to understand the boat's reactions. If you want to play with this tool, with this system, you can regulate your speed and also the consumption for maximum fuel economy. Like right now, 6 litres per mile at 25 knots. On this model we have two D11 engines, Volvo Penta 11,000 cubic centimetres each, for a power that you can choose 625, 670 or 725 horses. Here we have the maximum, i.e. a total of 1,450 horses. These turbo diesel units have a very flat torque curve and very high, between 1,600 and 2,100 rpm. And see what happens just cruising at 2,100 revs a minute. 27 and a half knots. This is an excellent cruising speed. It's fantastic to be able to operate a boat like this, even out of season. Did you ever think it would be so? Now, of course, is the time to push, not just a little more, but to the maximum. 
We remove half interceptors. Yes, it improves the ascent, but also because at this speed they are not needed anymore. The angle of incidence is correct, it is perfect for the hull, and in fact, the speed has risen. Il comfort acustico è sempre ottimo. Il vento non entra, mi accarezza appena. The acoustic comfort is always great. The wind does not enter. It just caresses the little hair I have left, and the speed is 36.5 knots. And the awning? Stable, firm, not slamming. It makes no noise. They have not only made a good hydrodynamic boat, but also aerodynamic. Gigi. Gigi, are you ready? Yes, because now I make the turn. Quick, sudden, like lightning. Che controllo! È proprio quello che cerco da una What control? It's just what I look for in a boat. Even if it's 60 feet, it is easy to handle. The dynamic phase is over. Now we'll look at the deck and then the interior. It is a modern sport boat and deserves a striking colour scheme and aggressive finishes. Cranky has gone even further and used darker shades for this model, but you can also choose other colours. All the deck areas are comfortable because they are open. In short, it is 60 feet, should of course be comfortable. They gave space to both passageways and relaxation areas, of which there are three, aft, at the centre of the cockpit and behind the windshield. The couch has five sides, it's very long. It supports, I believe, 12 people. In the cockpit, there are also the air conditioning vents. The fiberglass mouldings on the aft platform are reminiscent of the builder's logo. The platform descends below the surface to launch the tender, which is stored in the stern garage. The square deck area is very airy, also thanks to the wide stairway leading below deck. The dining area and the kitchen are distinct but not separate. The kitchen deserves special attention because of its capacity and the rich set of appliances. On the lower deck there are three cabins with two bathrooms. There are two full-size cabins, one forward, it is quite traditional but with direct access to the day bathroom. The other, a midships, it has a considerable height, large windows and has a lot of storage space. In fact, there is a dresser and a full closet. The chair completes the furniture inside the suite, and there is a bathroom with a box shower. The third cabin has crossed bunk beds. Finally, at the stern, there is a cabin for the sailor. Un flying bridge vi offre una terrazza in più. The flying bridge offers another terrace. A hardtop has fully protected the main deck. But how do you give up on an open with a deck space so big? Do you see? I would choose a boat like this, like the Cranky 60ST.